At the tops of the mountains lives this elusive chicken-like bird called the ptarmigan that changes its feathers to blend in with its surroundings throughout the seasons. So in the summertime, they're brown to blend in with the rocks, and in the winter, they're pure white to blend in with the snow. There's three species of ptarmigan. I photographed all three, the rock, the willow, and the white-tailed ptarmigan, but I'm still looking for a shot of the white-tailed ptarmigan that really captures the bird within the context of its winter environment, with the snow-covered mountains in the background. I'm on a journey to try to get that shot. I do think like a lot of the best photos ever taken of wildlife have one thing in common, and that's that the photographer had a vision and they pre-planned what they were going to do in order to get the shot. Sometimes you fail and you don't pull it off. Um, and sometimes you succeed exactly how you envisioned. And sometimes you like succeed in that you get a really interesting shot, but it's very often not exactly what you had in mind. Mission ptarmigan, not going too well, to be honest. Um, haven't seen any signs. So the last time I can remember there not being lots of snow in the mountains at this time of year was maybe 2015. There was so little snow in the mountains that year that it made finding the ptarmigans easier because they just stood out on the rocks because there was no snow, they had no camouflage. But it's so beautiful out here, really having a nice time. Staying warm, um, eating some warm food out of a bag, and yeah, it's great. <laughs> Second day getting up at five in the morning. Yeah, if you were to give us a number, like what, what is the percent chance of seeing a tunnel again? I know I may have thrown around a number of like 45% chance earlier, but I think it's maybe more like 4.5. <laughs> um, we're really looking for a needle in a haystack or a, a snowflake in a snow mound. <laughs> Uh, beautiful blizzardy conditions, maybe not the best for searching, but, uh, but yeah, looking forward to it. This looks like some good ptarmigan food. <laughs> Bits of vegetation sticking out of the snow. Close to a thousand meters of vertical elevation gain to conquer here. Well, we're back at it. Now we headed further east into the Rockies, uh, following up on some reports actually that ptarmigan were seen in this area not too long ago. So we're up here at the tree line. Whew. As soon as I lower that, I feel the, uh, <laughs> the cold wind on the face. Wow. Obviously, a bird surviving up here needs a bunch of unique adaptations to make that survival possible. One really cool thing I love about ptarmigan is that they have built-in snowshoes. So if you look closely at their feet, they actually have feathers growing all the way down their feet. And that's not something we see in a lot of birds. This is an ecosystem that is being impacted by climate change. Um, and in response to climate change, birds kind of have a couple options if they're going to move. They can move poleward, or they can move up the mountain. And this is something that has been documented with a lot of species, is as things get warmer, the plant communities on the mountain grow further upslope, and the birds will move with them further upslope. But what happens to the species that already live at the top of the mountain? Oh, hang on, what are those tracks? Hang on. Oh my God, those are ptarmigan tracks. Have some beautiful ptarmigan tracks here. It was snowing yesterday, so these are probably pretty fresh. Um, you can actually see a bit of a wing print here where the bird landed, walked over this way, probably had a bit of a snack on the willows, continued to those willows, walked to those willows, and then the tracks disappear, so it probably flew off there. Um, but this is really great to see. Like, I don't think people get into wildlife photography because they feel the need to tell a story about a major conservation issue. I feel like for most people, they get into it because they just love wildlife, and that's kind of where it starts. You know, like, we, we almost have this duty as wildlife photographers to, like, utilize those photos to try to give back in a way. <laughs> like, I'm not acting like wildlife photographers are heroes, right? Like, we photograph wildlife. We're very, very lucky and privileged to be able to do so. The goal is to capture a photo that gets people to think and consider how special this animal is, that we should care about this animal, and that it, it, exists, in, 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 it exists deliberately in the place that it exists.
Oh, that's a good shot. I'm happy with that. <laughs> you know, you go out searching for ptarmigan, a couple ravens fly in, and you end up with basically the shot that I wanted to get with the ptarmigan, just with the raven. Um, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> like 100% worth the trip. That's how it happens.